Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Boom Rookies presented by ESPN coming at you live from the Temple of Boom. My name is Matt Bungard and with me today, Nick Campton. Hello. Hey man, what's going on? Not much mate. Uh, how's that uh, post-Celtics championship glow treating you? Oh, awesome. Mate. Two I'm... diehard basketball <laughs> fans that we are. I, uh, I'm getting the private jet over to go to the parade mm. later this week. Can't wait. Perhaps Mr. Kraft will be there. Right? Perhaps. Will yeah. Mr. Crow be there? Uh, I doubt it. I think doubt, he'll be. I, I assume he'll be at ANZ Stadium. What do we? What do you think Russell Crowe thinks of basketball? Doesn't like. Not 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 enough. Not enough collisions. Not enough violence. Not, I would say not enough. Not dramatic enough. Yeah, for him. that's true too. Too many. Too many points. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, doesn't like that. Yeah, no. He's one. Yeah, he's one of those freaks. Is I actually like low scoring games. Yeah. Because I like defense. Yes. I don't know why he's saying defense like he's American, but yeah, he goes on the Can't know the mind of Mr. Crow. A beautiful mind, some would say. That's right. They would. Okay. Uh, Thursday night, we've got the New South Wales under-19s taking on the Queensland under-19s at Leichhardt Oval. Um, a, a, a game right in your backyard? Are you, are you heading down there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go check it out. Excellent. Why not? You know, go have a look, see the young fellas, yeah. see what's happening. It's, um, it, it's an interesting one because there's a couple of names, like you're much more locked into like the sort of schoolboy and, and lower grade stuff than I am. But there are a couple of names on each side of the field that sort of do jump off the page, even to me, that I recognise as guys. I know mm. Chevy Stewart's a big part of of the Raiders future and you've got Kobe Black in the seven for the Queensland side. Um, talk to me about some of the guys in this team and sort of who do you think, or what's the buzz around some of these guys in terms of who do you think is, is gonna be sort of like a big player in the NRL later on in their careers? The interesting thing about these games is it really can be a bit of like a, it's sort of almost the first time you see some of these blokes, mm. you know? And even if you're not super dialed in, say you tuned into last year's game, Ethan Strange scored a hat trick, now he's doing great stuff for Canberra in the first, uh, the Finu brothers, Samuela and uh, Latu, they were both out there. Samuela played really well and was out there mixing it up. So like, it's sort of like a little bit of a first look type of thing. You know, you always got to take it with a, with a grain of salt because a lot of the time they're not the finished product. Mm. But like, maybe there might be a little flash or something. So for the Blues, the, the main one to watch is probably Chevy Stewart. He played in this game last year, a year young, um, and played, has played nearly a year of footy against men now in reserve grade and, and a little bit in the NRL as well. Probably wasn't as ready for the NRL as uh, Canberra and I thought that he was, but still a player of enormous promise. Really fast, great support play, great instincts, super confident as well. So he'll be one to look at. There's the McLean brothers who are both contracted to Penrith. Jesse, who's played a bit of first grade and scored that incredible try against Saints the other week, catching that bomb. That he's was, on the that wing. Was incredible. They reckon his brother, Casey, who's in the centers, they reckon he's, uh, he's the one. Penrith are very, very excited about him. I haven't seen much of him play, but I've just heard a lot about him. Mm. You know, so he's one of those guys. There's a halfback playing for the Blues named Mitch Woods, who's contracted to Canterbury at the minute. Again, haven't seen a lot of him, but I've heard a lot about him. And he was a bit of like a multi-sport phenom. Like rugby wanted him and AFL wanted him and all that, but he stuck with he stuck with league. So I'm excited to see him. And then on the bench, they've got Caden Lars, young fella from Townsville of all places. Tom Leroy Lars's boy. I was about to yeah, ask. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So I think by the origin rules, he's meant to play for Queensland, but because there's the father son thing, yeah. he's opted to play for the Blues. So he's operating deep behind ev enemy lines in the deep north. I love that. Yeah, I know. So I know the Cowboys are really stoked about him. He was on an extended bench for him for that game against the Roosters a couple of weeks ago. I don't think he's as big as his old man, which is okay because Tom Leroy Lars was like a man mountain, mm. but. The Cowboys really like him. That's cool. And I've That's heard, awesome I've heard some people say that he's the best young forward in the country. Wow. Which is very, very high rap. So I'm keen to see him too. Then for Queensland, they've got a, another couple of blokes who have played first grade also at the Cowboys. Jackson Perdue, mm -hmm. who played in that, that, Roosters, uh, that Roosters win and backed up against uh, the Warriors yep. last week too. Found, funny thing I learned about him. When he came down to play in that game against the Roosters, that was the first time he left Queensland. I love those stories. How good is that? It's like when the Hunters came down for the reserve grade Super Bowl and it was like none of these blokes have ever been further south of Brisbane yeah. in their lives. It was yeah. fantastic. So I, he, I, I think he's someone that they might even be grooming to take over like a half spot in the next mm. couple of years. They really, really rate him. Jamal Shibasaki is another one who played in that uh, Roosters game. Gamets, brother. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Well, it could be a cousin or something. Well, Shibasaki, that's like Smith up No, 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 no. It could be a cousin or something. Yeah, but, but he's, a, he's, a, he's a back row of yeah. some promise. And then there's two Broncos dudes to keep an eye on as well. Cody Black, who you yep. mentioned before, yep. who scored, I think it was 4,000 I was going to say, they, they had that game the other week where they won. And we're not being funny here. It was like 132 nil it was or something. A, it was a real smash and he scored, and he scored 50 40 points. 40 odd points. Yeah. He's a halfback. He's played a little bit of Q Cup as well and has like produced some eye-catching highlights. And then there's this winger, Israel Leota, who I think is getting pretty close to first grade. 
as well. Um, and then there's a dummy half. All right, his name's Cameron Bukowski. I've got no idea who he's contracted <laughs> he's to, who he might play cop. for. He's going he's to expose the corruption L- in the PD. Lieutenant, <laughs> Lieutenant P- Bukowski used to believe in justice. Now he believes in his cult 9mm. That's right. Yeah. I love that. Um, and just for, to clarify, it was Kobe Black playing for the Burley Bears. They beat uh, the Wide Bay Bulls 130 nil. And he scored 46 points. A those are real numbers. Those aren't us making yeah. a joke. Those real, that really A happened. tough loss for Wide Bay. They, they, if they've got a couple of early tries, who knows? A couple <laughs> of calls went against them first five minutes. You never know what would well, happen. <laughs> but maybe if they'd gotten on the board first. Did they miss an early penalty goal? Oh, maybe maybe that. establishing oh, that early lead. Uh, losing 130 to two would be worse, right? That would be worse, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've heard a lot about Black. I know a lot of Broncos fans and sort of accounts that follow all the lower grade stuff have been very vocal about how they think he's a giant part of their future, the likely Reynolds successor, a lot of them are saying. Um, talk, uh, do you maybe talk a little bit more about him? Like, have you seen much of him? Well, I haven't all, really, I, I can't really. I've heard all the same things that everyone else mm. has. I haven't seen much of him. Yeah. But one of the only things I've actually seen, he set up a try in his Queensland Cup debut playing away at the Hunters. So he's gone up to PNG, an intimidating environment for his yeah. debut, playing against some intimidating dudes. And I think it was like a tricky little kick that he regathered and then the next play, he's kicked again across the field to, mm. for his winger to score. So he's clearly got some pretty big footy in him. Yep. But that's why I'm keen to see him tonight. You know, get a bit of a measure of him, see what's going on. And yeah, man, get a look at, get a look at the future. Yeah, shoot, you, know. shoot, you, shoot. you probably can't see this unless you're watching on YouTube. But I'm wearing a shirt from Pappy's Smokehouse mm. in, uh, in St. Louis, in the great state of Missouri. And the reason I'm, the reason I'm wearing this shirt is because sometimes these young fellas, you've got to let them marinate. For right. hours and hours and hours in the smokehouse, mm. you know? What's Don't want to bring them out early. What stadium want to bring could them out we early. call the smokehouse? The smokehouse. Yeah. We'd need a series of players to test positive to weed, and yeah. then we could change, then we could call it the smokehouse. All right. One, the up in, and then away trips to the up in smoke tour. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, I, I will, I'll tip New South Wales 22-20. Why not? I'll go the Blues just because the conditions should favour them, but honestly, it's, it's, it's really hard to say because a lot of these blokes were seeing them for the first time. All right, and it is the return of What About This Bloke. We've had a few weeks off. If you are a new listener, welcome. And this is a usually weekly segment where we take a trip down memory lane and talk about a player from the past. Usually late 90s, early 2000s is our sweet spot, Nicholas. Uh, We put on a hiatus while we had the competition to name the studio, but it's back this week, and it's back with an absolute beauty. This one's very exciting. So because it is the first one in the new studio, I reached out to the editor at large, former co-host Mitch Doyle, Mm. and I said, mate, it's time. Pick somebody. And for a bit of background, me and Mitch and a few of our other mates were out on Saturday and we were at the Legends Lounge at Parramatta Stadium for when Parra played the Roosters. It's called the Legends Lounge because every game, two Parramatta legends get in there and... Exactly two? No more, no less? Precisely two. It's not the Legend Lounge. Yep. It's not the three Legends Lounge. No. It is the Legends Lounge. Okay. So they get in there and you, you can yarn to them about footy and they'll have a beer with you and all that sort of thing. And all week, the speculation was, was running wild about which legends will enter the lounge. And a lot, of, a lot of names were thrown around, a lot of good, honest Parramatta men. Like Ben Smith was a popular choice. Tim Smith, less popular, but coveted. Mm. You know, fooey, fooey, moi, moi, wouldn't that be something? It would be. What if it's for Letty Mateo? How will I contain myself? Mm. So we get in there in the end, and one of the Parramatta legends is Peter Wynn, who's got the footy shop up the road, Peter Wynn's score. Yeah. I had, you know, really, really nice guy, but a bit before our time. Mm. But the other one, was Mitch's choice tonight. Michael Butner. Hell yeah. Love Michael Butner, bro. I reckon Michael Butner might be one of the first players I ever got an autograph from. Really? Yeah. Talk and me through it. Well, that was, it was the World Sevens in 2003. Oh. And because in between... I was going to say, what a 1990s story, except it happened yeah. in 2003. But it, it was... So you're at the old SFS, you know, they had the carpet where like, Mitch and I could certainly used to stand on at, at, at A-League games and stuff. Yep. And they, they had, when teams weren't playing, they would sporadically do autograph signings throughout the day. And I think the, the newly... The newly uh, minted West Tiger himself, Michael Butner, was up there in between Tigers games, and he, and he signed my program. And behind me in the queue was Parramatta Jesus, who said, "Butes, come back to Parramatta. We miss you." <laughs> <laughs> Parramatta Jesus, you don't hear much about him anymore. Yeah, that was a that, that's a real. You had to be there. No, well, there's still like there's still fans today who are known for dressing up. With, but like, I don't think the, it's the, but there's the, the Mount there's the Mount Smart Joker. Yep. Right. There's the there's, there's the, that, the gladiator guy at um, Southgate and the, and the Bulldog one as well. Braveheart, yeah. yeah. But that's, that, man, Parramatta Jesus though, man. He was showing well, us he all Well, he used to get a run on the footy show and stuff. Yeah. Like that, that was probably... Well, Parramatta Jesus and the fake siren. Yeah. They were fake the, siren. They, oh. were, they, were, they were two And that dude that had a website supporting the buy. All great <laughs> stuff. But 
Paramount just used to host a touch tournament. I played in it a couple of times. Oh, yeah? <laughs> How'd you go? Uh, we was did okay. I, I played on the West Tigers team, actually, because I was mates with like, my mates. You met a couple of them, Nick and AJ, two brothers. We used to, I used to go to a lot of Tigers games with them, and they, mm. these, these were like 04, 05 days. How'd you go? We made the final one year and lost, unfortunately. Well, who to? The Roosters. Oh, bro. You shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> That's all right. It's a bit of fun. But yeah. So anyway, Mick Butner came into the league in 92 with Parramatta, and apparently he was like a schoolboy gun. Like the size he was when he was playing first grade, apparently he's been that big since he was like 15, 16. So he was just like stomping dudes and had a few years at Parramatta when Parramatta were at a very low ebb. But then his career really takes off when he goes to the Bears in 96 mm. and he joins a team that's really tough, really talented, sort of on the cusp of contending for the premiership. And it was him and Brett Dallas joined the Bears in 96 and all of a sudden they're off to the races and the Bears can't stop scoring points. And while the Bears like had some, some uh, troubles... <laughs> Maybe, let's call it, from getting to getting the grand final. They've fallen short in the prelims every year. Butner was one of their absolute best. Mm. Um, in 97, he scores a try that, that, uh, that levels the scores in the prelim against Newcastle. And Jason Taylor's got an easy kick to, to put him in the grand final against Manly, and he sprays it. And then in 98, when the Bears stuff starts to fall apart, Butner still plays great footy. He was almost leading try scorer. He got 20-odd tries that season. He's only got, he really only got rep jerseys during the Super League war, mm. but it did give him this incredible rep st stat line. One test, one origin, one city origin appearance. Love that. One million dollars. How there good was, is that? There was no need for a second. There wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't. And Michael Butner wept, for there were no more worlds Two to Two tries conquer. in that game for Australia, too. I think, didn't they play like PNG? I they remember watching like, that game they put on like two thousand. I vaguely remember PNG kicking a penalty goal when they were down 20. I'm pretty sure that team, because... The PNG Rugby League had signed with Super League. So I'm pretty sure the PNG team was Adrian Lamp, Marcus Bayer, and a bunch of blokes they dragged down from the Highlands. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Um, and then, back to Para. Well, he has a year with the Northern Eagles and it doesn't really work out. But then him and Jason Taylor, the old Bears halves combo, go to Para and kick off the 01 Eels, who, you know, probably the greatest team never to win a premiership. Broke the record for most points scored in a season. Um... And we're just an incredible team to watch. And Butner was a really, really big part of that, you know? And I always loved it. I always loved it that the two Bears guys who had come so close to winning a premiership so many times before, mm. you know, their careers kind of like go on different paths and it's not that great, but then they reunite at Para and they have this one last great season together that should have ended in a premiership if they just didn't choke it up in the grand final. But Butner approaches that in a really healthy way. I've talked to Mick a couple of times for stories. Or what have you. And he says that the week before and the week after the grand final are the best two weeks of his life. It's just the day itself mm. didn't go the way he wanted it to. And then he finished up with a couple of years at the Tigers where he, you know, made little Matt Bungard's dreams come true one fateful day. I got Craig autograph that day. Oh, really? Yeah. You still got it? It's on like my, I don't know if my, I, I think the jersey might still be at my parents' house. It's, a, it's, a, it's the first South jersey I got, which I went to Lincraft and did my own num, name and numbering on the back for Fletcher, Brian Fletcher, when we signed him. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Have you got that program that Owen Craigie signed? Is it like bagged and boarded? Like it's a I, I, don't think I, I don't think I do anymore, unfortunately. Ah, uh, that's heartbreaking. But um, I think the jersey might be still at my, yeah. signed by the 02 and 03 Rabbitohs. So what, what, what a pack of winners. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, and then Butner finishes up with two years at West, mm. and then he sort of stays involved in the game. I think he was on the match review committee for a while. Yeah. Was pretty high up with Oztag or whatever, and now he's just hanging out at Parramatta games, hobnobbing, shaking yeah. hands with, with a bunch of drunks. What could be better than that? Poor, poor Butes, though. Like, gets close with the Bears, goes to power, greatest team ever to not win the comp, goes to the Tigers, retires after 04. <laughs> <laughs> not great, but you could you could say that he paved the way for a lot you of that could success. Say that. You a, a, could. a load bearing. He is also sign. like when you think about those old Asics para jerseys. He's like honestly, he's right up him there. Him and right? like the two, two of the guys yeah. that pop straight in your brain. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So you got you got to love Michael Butin. If you don't, I don't care to know you. Yeah, hundred percent agree. All right, so uh, who's up next week? So up next week, oh, I am not sure of their actual name. Their current Patreon name is the Slater Cobo Disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> so Slater Cobo Disconnect, please reach out in the next few days. Let us know who you'd like to, sounds like you'd a, like to choose. Sounds like an we'll ambitious uh, country music super group. Oh, yeah, I don't mind that, eh? I'm just thinking of the Florida Georgia S line. Well, dude, Sl Slater Cobo is a good country well, singer. Very name. close to Slater Kinney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. It is. All right, let's move on. Just the five games this weekend. Uh, no one else tonight. We've got the under-19s origin and just the one game. On Friday, I'll ask you again, what am I going to do between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. on Friday, Nick? Talk Spend time with your family like some kind of loser? <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, 
dis disgraceful. But no, we've got... Oh, I, I want, during that time, I want you to look through your old World Sevens programs. I'll try and find yeah. it. Well, it'll all be at my... I'll, I'll message my mum. We'll see, we'll see what's going on. Uh, anyway, we've got first game of the round. The Dolphins. The Storm. At Suncorp. Um, first of all, how are we feeling about, like, crowd-wise, it does seem like a bit of air has come out of the Dolphins this year. And again, like, there hasn't been that much buzz around this game. And I'm worried that this could be, like, another Friday night game, a big primetime game at Suncorp for them where there's just not that many people. I understand that. I think with some games at this time of year, you've just got to punt on them, though. Mm. You know, you've just got to, like, accept that no one's going to turn up or what have you. Um, you would love to see them play this sort of game at SeaWorld but they're not going to do yeah. that because like what we talk about all the time, they're going to make more money by selling a few corporate seats at Suncorp well, more than they would selling out SeaWorld. So disappointing, but okay. you know, so is so much of life sometimes. That's true. Um, the big return. This is not disappointing. right? That no, this is, this is exciting. This is the opposite of disappointing. On that, on that Suncorp turf that he's had so many like, good and unfortunate moments on. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, really excited to see him back. Yeah, me too. Um, I would really like to see him hit the ground running. Um, I think that they've been pretty careful in bringing him back from this injury. I think if last week was like a finals game, I think he might have played, you know? So I'm really hoping that he can come into this and not, not, not take any time to feel his way out, just sort of like hit the ground 1,000 miles an hour, fit into that attack really nicely uh, with Jerome Hughes and, and, and just really, really get going and really push hard into this back half of the season. I, I'd sort of forgotten how long he'd been away for. It's yeah. been six or eight weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, it's something like that. Mm. And um, of, of course, he's had so many struggles recently with injury. Mm. And everyone, like, I think we talked about this before. Uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Brian Toe, but Pappenhausen's right up there in that conversation as most universally liked rugby league players. Absolutely. Well. And he was playing good footy before he got injured. Um, maybe not the sort of footy that he's, the sort of scorching, crazy, unbelievable ball that he's played in the past. But I felt like he was getting there. He was fitting into the attack really nicely. Um, so I'm just sort of hoping that he can sort of come back and, and pick up right from where he left off and he doesn't have to start again or anything like that. And I think he'll be able to because Melbourne, through the last few weeks, even with a lot of changes to personnel, have been able to do really well at just keep playing their sort of footy, keep playing their kind of game, you know? And Jerome Hughes is a really big part of that. Like, we've been like waxing lyrical about him on the show for ages now. But because he's there and because Pappenhausen's there, and while the, the Finns are welcoming back some key players as well, notably Jesse Bromwich. I don't think their forward pack is going to be able to, like, cunning old man no. know-how their way out of this out of this one. You know, mm. I know the Storms pack isn't the most powerful, but I think they'll be able to get it done. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm tipping them. I, I think Trey Fuller has shown some nice sparks for the Dolphins, and that's just... When you, when you, when you look at, like, reserve-grade players, that's about as good as a replacement you can get for a guy as good as Hammer, Hammer is, but... Yeah, I, I agree with you, mate. I think the Storm might just have a little bit too much here. The guy on the bench for the Dolphins mm. that we haven't talked about in a while, we didn't talk about when he signed there, but now he's back. He's actually playing. Tevita Pangor Jr. I thought we were going to talk about Mark Nichols for a minute. We can't do that every week, okay, man. There is, there, is a limit. there is a limit to the amount of Mark Nichols content, not just the listeners, that, that, but that I can bear. This can't be the Alex Johnson and Mark Nichols hour, no matter how much you make it. What try and it make it. Be, no, it can't be. I just told you. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know how Mitch had, had the Vanity Project with Broncos Weekly? Yeah. You can go start Nichols and AJ Weekly. Oh, the listeners would be full of them. All two of them. Yep. Yeah. Is Mark Nichols' parents? I don't know. I think even, even, they, even they would have <laughs> limits to anyway, how much they could hear about their darling Tavita boy. Tavita Bango Jr. is back playing in a row. He is, yeah. Um, Do you want him in the blue squad for Game 3? <laughs> I have been a big Tavita Pangai Jr. believer for a very, very long Some time. Some would say to a fault. I would definitely say to a fault. Uh, through many ups and downs, through many, many times where I feel like he's sort of let himself down and he's let his teammates down, and through other times where he's really done himself proud. You know, mm. I don't know how, much, how many more times I can bring up how good he was in that Penrith run to the Premiership in he 2021. I don't think they win that comp without him. Mm. And there were some... Great days for Brisbane as well, even when, you know, Brisbane as a, as a team weren't going that high. But at some point, you've kind of got to accept a guy is what he is, and he's not going to turn into what you might have always hoped he could be. And that's kind of where I'm at with Tavita Pangai Jr. right now, you know. Um, I haven't forgotten what he said when he left Canterbury, and he said he st was sick of people telling him what to do, mm. sick of listening to halfbacks, sick of listening to coaches, all that sort of thing. And... 
I don't know. I think he could be fine for the Dolphins if he's just playing every couple of weeks, coming off the bench, playing 20 minutes and just smashing, smashing things up when he's out there. I wouldn't want to rely on him for any more than that. Um, and I think that's kind of what he is at this point of his career. And I think he could have been a lot more, uh, but I think it's also clear that that's not really what he always wanted. Mm. So if this is what he wants to be, then that's what I'll accept that he is. Yeah, um, but totally I think fair. he... I think he really could have been something. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm, I am very interested to see how it goes, though. So, yeah. All right, so uh, Storm Storm for us. All right, moving on. We do have three games on Saturday, incredibly. A, a full slate of Super Saturday against all of them. It's, is, is it a full Super Saturday, or is it kind of like a slightly depowered Saturday? I guess, but it's three games where I don't think there's like, a is clear it, is, it, is it the kind of Super Saturday? Yeah, like Superman's it. here, but there's enough kryptonite to slow him down just a maybe, little bit. Maybe, maybe, I guess. But uh, the first game is... Two relatively full strength teams in the Gold Coast Titans and the New Zealand Warriors. Well, are, are the Titans full strength? Is Tino still out? Can we get confirmation? Oh, sorry, Tino on that? is still out. Tino is still out. But okay, Dave is playing because for the some feed, reason yep. he does not exist in the world of the <laughs> Queensland Maroons. Uh, yep, the Warriors aren't quite at full strength. I think Barnett's out mm. because he's 18th man for the Blues yep. and Kurt Capewell's out because yep. he's been picked up. I think for the Maroons actually called up Chris McQueen ahead of <laughs> David Feeder. <laughs> you know, he's still playing. In England, right? No, no, no. He's playing for like East Tigers in the Q Cup. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, he's, awesome. he's so back, dude. Um, and Watani Zalesniak suspended yes. for the Warriors. But they are getting Roger Tuovasa-Shek back Big in. for his first game in a while. Um, this is a bit of a TCB game for mm. me, for the Warriors. Like, take care of business. Like, yep. go out there and blow this Titans team off the park and sort of show that you are serious about getting your season back on track. Because they had those three great wins. Then they had the match against the Storm, which I think they should have won and they were in a position to win. They were up 14 nil after 20 minutes or whatever. And then when things turned, they couldn't quite keep their heads about them. Mm. Which is fine. Like, you know, Melbourne is a much is a better team than then. I think Melbourne are a premiership contender and the Warriors aren't. But if the Warriors do want to keep this revival going, if they want to sort of keep things the way they have been, or they want to sort of aim a little bit higher than just sort of fighting around in that mass of teams looking for spots at the bottom half of the eight. They kind of got to win this, and they kind of got to win it well. You know, I think they'll be able to. I think Sean Johnson will be much better for the run for last week. Um, the Fafita return makes an upset possible. I think any time he's playing, yep. the Titans totally. can do something. But I would like to see the Warriors take care of this one without too many dramas. Don't get dragged down into the molasses of Titans insanity, mm. which they can sometimes trap teams in. Like... They're, they're, uh, I, talk, I know I talk too much about their system and their process and all that, but if they do that, they should be able to rise above the muck, you know? And that's kind of what I want to see from them. I agree, and that's why. Here's Taylor rolling the ball in on him. He's after it. He might have got it down. He thinks he did. Oh! Cold train car. Yeah, I badly need some away tips. You need some. Well, you need something, bro. I've lost two out of the last three. Yeah, the club's yeah, that's that's Nick Campton areas, bro. You can't oh, be having don't that. Don't say that. I'm still second. Wait, well, no, losing two out of three. That's true. Yeah. Well, to be fair, one of them was like literally everyone lost. Like eighty something percent of people lost. Mate, first. if everyone jumped off a bridge, would you do it? I mean, I'd probably be leading it. Yeah. <laughs> they think that guy's cool. He's jumping off a bridge. I'm going to do it. So yes. What now? Have you never jumped off a bridge? I've jumped off a bridge. No, I've jumped off a bridge, yeah, but it, it was always my decision. I was never following anyone. No, I'm, a, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Do you ever go down to Watermole and jump off that big cliff? Hey? Do you ever go down to Watermole Bay and jump off that big I cliff? I did not know. Oh, it's pretty good. Mm. I'm jumping off stuff. Um, I'm, I'm jumping on the Warriors bandwagon, though. <laughs> the only thing that would give me a little bit of pause about Cole training the Warriors is, one, I Cole trained them last week, so I can't get him this week. Yep, that, that helps. But two, the Warriors can have a strange game in them on the Goldie. Um, there's always it's fun, a funny thing a lot to of say, Warriors fans there. always a lot of expectation when they play there because there's always a big mm. pro Warriors crowd because every Kiwi has a family member who lives in South East Queensland. That's just a true, that's just a true I fact. I believe it's the law. Yeah, 100%. Mm. So it, they, those games up there can take on a little bit of a strange feeling mm. for them. But that's just another thing that they've got to overcome. And if they want to address this sort of poor first half of the year that they've had where they didn't play their ability a fair bit, that's the sort of thing they got to do. I'm expecting them to keep it pretty tight early. I'm expecting them to try and run over the top of the Titans, which I imagine they'll back themselves to do. The Tigers were able to do it last week, and that was with Mo Fodawaka there, and he's mm. not there this time. So I'm thinking big one for Tohu Harris, big one for Adam Fanua Blake. And then once they sort of like muscle up a little bit, 
then get out to the edges and cut them to yeah, pieces. Yeah, the Storm had a fair bit of joy in the edges last week against the Warriors, and obviously the Warriors' edges are so potent. So I'm just, mm. I think this could be a relatively open game. I think I know the Titans didn't score many points last week, but they had I th- a lot uh, of this chances. Is not me, yeah. Again, this is not a fact. They had nine line breaks, I think, in that game against the Tigers. Yeah, that was in the first um, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, that one's a joke. But I think over the, <laughs> I think generally in the game they had nine line breaks. So. Like they had an ability to get down the field. They just couldn't execute at the end of it. I think having Fafita back helps that. He's so important to their goal line attack. Just Even if he doesn't get the ball, he just draws so much attention. And with, with the way that the Storm were able to pretty easily get after the Warriors on, on, the, on the edges last week, especially on, on the Warriors' defensive left, um, I think that could be a source of joy for the Titans. I don't know if Fafita's on the other side, but it doesn't really matter. The Titans, with their outside backs, can, can kill you on both sides if they're, if they're clicking. So I think this could be a high-scoring game, but I do mm. think this could be like a Warriors 34, Titans 20 type deal, something like that. I'd love to see something. I would like that. Yeah. That's, that's what you want to kick off a not-so-super Saturday. Yeah. Just nice and breezy. Mm. Okay. Heading up to Gosford for 5.30, Roosters Bulldogs. Uh, believe our man on the ground, uh, Luke. Uh, said this game is close to, if not already, sold out. They've been selling out nearly every game that they've been playing up there. Yeah. Gosford loves it. I'll be, I'm going up there for Bring a couple of weeks the for the South Tigers. That'll be, that'll be sick. But South's yeah. playing the Tigers? I hate that. Why? I don't know. Play him, play him in Sydney too. Yeah, we're, going, we're going up. Shipping up to Gosford. Shipping up to Gosford. What a dr- play shipping up to Boston. On what a, for the what a dream. Yeah. Um, this will be a good game. I'm yeah. a little bit pumped for this one. I think, a, I, think it's, I think it's got a bit of a match of the round vibe, well, despite, a, <laughs> despite many of the outs for the Roosters. Well, what a result for the Dogs. They thought they'd have no Birdo. And instead, not only do they have Birdo, the, the guy that took Birdo's spot is Connor Watson, who is now not playing for the Roosters. Birdo's back. Birdo's back. Birdo's back. <laughs> it's, a big, it's not as big a game for the Roosters. I actually think it's a really big game for Canterbury. So yes. I wrote a little bit about this this morning. Canterbury are six right now, right? Which might not sound like much. That's the highest they've been on the ladder in eight years mm. since the last time they made the finals. So around 25 or 2016, that was the last time they were sixth on the ladder. They are like, that shows you two things. One, just how bad their previous eight years have been. And two, how this team is really starting to find something. You know, like you can qualm about buy points and all that sort of thing. I don't care about that. What I care about is like right now, here, today, mm. in the Temple of Boom. In the real world. In the real world, bro. Mm. They're sixth on the ladder. And that's a, that's a big step forward for a team that hasn't taken many steps forward recently. They've already won more games than they did last year and the year before that. That's impressive. And, and the defense is fantastic. Are they still defen- first? I don't know if they're still first, but they've been on a pretty long run now where even if they haven't won the ga- all the games they've mm. played, the games they've lost... They've gone down narrowly. They lost to the Raiders, I think, by four. They lost to the Panthers to by six. Well, that's ages ago now. That's not really relevant to proceedings, but you've got to talk about Souths, don't you? So Canterbury have really started to build something. They've really started to find something. I think there's a confidence in what they're doing there that sort of helps steer them through that Parramatta game, even though a bunch of blokes got injured and a bunch of tries got disallowed. That really gets now put to the test mm. when they're playing a Roosters side that even though they don't have Lenu and Watson and Angus Crichton are still pretty red hot. Oh, yeah. You know, they've still got Tedesco. They've still got Manu. Dom they've Young's still back. got they've got Dom Young back. They've still got Waria Hargraves. They've still got Nalfahu White. They've still got Terrell, mate. They've got a lot of good players and they've got a lot of muscle too. Mm. So they've got a lot of things that can really, really sting the dogs. And the dogs don't have Stephen Crichton, who's so important, I think, for their confidence. Mm. There's been a lot of talk about his leadership and all that. And I actually think that's a bigger thing more through the week than anything else than on the field. But he also just gives them a lot of confidence because he has a lot of confidence. Yes. You know, They're also without Preston. They were without Addo Carp. Kickow's on an extended bench. So he might sneak in. If he does, that'll be a really big inclusion. But... Yeah, it's, it's a real, real test for them. And I think this is one of those games where I'm, like, I'm tipping the Roosters. I think the Roosters are going to win. I think they've got too much muscle in the middle of the field for Canterbury to really deal with. That's, all, that's been the way to get at Canterbury nearly all season. Yep. But I think for Canterbury, I think it's important for them to play them close, play them well, come out of the game and think, I tell you what, on another day, or maybe if Critter and Fox were there, maybe we could have got them. You know? The important thing for Canterbury is... Keep that confidence intact. Don't blow a lot of the hard work that they've been doing in recent weeks. And I think that's something that they can do. I think they can run the Roosters close, but I think the Roosters love a bit too much for them. Yeah, it, it's a really interesting. I 
because I had tipped them away tip, I honestly considered tip uh, cold training the Bulldogs in this one. Oh, but then no, I, you're not that low. No, down, no, no. Right? I looked at the I looked at the team list, and and, and it is a, I think it's going to be a lot closer than than, than I initially thought. Um, they've got, got Brandon Smith coming back as well. Is is important for the Roosters, especially without Watson there. Mm. Uh, I am tipping the Bulldogs. I think that really? I think they're going to spring an upset here. But I agree with you. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't know if this is the top of my head. This this could be another thing that we've made up. But I feel like the Bulldogs have not beaten the Roosters very many times in like the last like ten years or so. They but they beat them earlier this no, year. No, I said not many times. Oh, okay. Because well, even then they did their best to throw it away. But um, I've pulled it up in front of me right now. So yes, they did win the game earlier this year. But then the Roosters have won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The Roosters won nine of the last ten before. But they always play them well. They always play them well. <laughs> they always play them well. Yeah. So that's that's I guess I guess for that entire time period the Bulldogs were terrible and the Roosters were premiership favourites. So well, I that does we help. did we did just go through yeah. that over the last eight True. years the dogs have never been yeah. higher than six. I'm gonna say the dogs. By the way, can we start saying there's no buy points in life as like a grind set sort of quote? To Ooh, I do people. like that. Maybe that's how we rebrand yeah. as rugby league themed grind set freaks. Yeah. yeah. Like no, when no someone when someone life. talks themselves down, you say, "Bro, that's a bottom four mentality." That's right. I'm looking for a top four mentality because only top four teams win the premiership, bro. Peter Valenti's came to my house, offered me two buy points. I said, "No, <laughs> I want to earn them." You know what I said? I said, "Give them to my biggest hater yep. to motivate me." It's true. He starts the season on two points. I'm already chasing him, <laughs> but I won't give up. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, those people are losers. Ah, oh, they're the worst. <laughs> oh, so he's not the worst. Grand old club. Are we done with it? I thought we had probably more Roosters stuff because we just talked about Canterbury for oh, sure. 20 okay. minutes. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, for the Roosters, I think they'd want a big one out of Brandon Smith because they, gave, well, him, they yeah. gave him the rev up and now I'm pretty sure everyone knows how they'd want him to respond. Mm. And just sort of judging from some of the reports out of there, what he does over the next six weeks might determine a fair bit of his future. Yeah. Uh, so if, if he was to leave the Roosters, there'd be no shortage of clubs that would want him. Mm. Plenty of teams will take a chance on him, either as a hooker or as a lock. Like Everyone knows how talented he is. But I think the Roosters, after 18 months, are sort of maybe reconsidering a few things. And they gave him this big rev up, and it might be the sort of thing where it's, mate, show us something, or we might try and start to, to ship you out. I've said before I'm a big believer in Brandon Smith and in his talent. Um, but I think it's going to be a little bit of a show me type period here over the next month or so. So we'll see how he goes with that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting situation. There. Um, you don't normally see this stuff play out in the media as, as publicly as it was. But I'm sure guys miss team meetings all the time, as we said last week. But yes, yeah, I, th- I feel like, yeah, you're right. This the next few weeks are going to be pivotal for his future at the Roosters. Mm. I think you should just tell them to get stuff. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe he needs the rugby league grind set. Maybe he Idiots, does. you know? Yeah. Potentially. <laughs> That'd be great. God, oh, I just, those people suck. Um, what, what do you want to see out of your man, James Tedesco? Oh, mate, I think he'll respond to it really well. Mm. Um, he, I think he always does. I think he's actually was in a pretty good place about the whole, yep. about getting dropped in the first place. I think he sort of made his peace with it and then he got the reprieve. I don't think it's sort of hanging over his head. So I'm sort of expecting just a normal Teddy game, which is already... Like, not many fullbacks in the league can sort of replicate that week to week. Like, maybe he doesn't go ballistic, but I'm expecting 170 odd metres, five or six tackle yep. busts, and a try assist line. Like, just normal Teddy stuff, you know? That's his, that's his whole deal. Even though he's not as good as he was, he's still unbelievably consistent, mm. you know? So. And I am expecting Dom Young to have a better game against the Bulldogs than his last game against the Bulldogs. Well, do you think that if they win, he just rips his jersey he like it did be. in Triumph, just showing off, yeah. showing off them pecs. That he, that was, he looked so cool in that moment, but it's unfortunate yeah. that it came after he tried to decapitate someone. Well, maybe, dude, maybe he's just trying to bring back the heat maybe. of that early, early, 2000s, early 2000s, rivalry. 2000s Dogs Roosters rivalry. Remember Morley got sent off with like an hour or so to go and they won the game? Well, what did he get sent off for? I can't remember. But I was there. I think it was a high tag. I don't know. Was that when he kicked Corey Hughes? No, nah, that was a different game. That was a different, that was a different time when he got set off against Canterbury. Wasn't Corey Hughes playing for the Sharks at that point? I don't remember. Yeah, no, no. Morley got sent off early for a really bad tackle. I think it was a really bad tackle. And the, the, the Roosters played like an hour with 12 men and, and beat the Dogs, I think. Mm. So. Don't, bro, yeah. it, it really made me sad when Canterbury sort of fell off like that. I know you, you, like, you enjoy dancing on the grave, but mm. when they fell off like that and then the Dogs-Roosters games just became... Little sideshows that no one cared about because when yeah. I was growing up, that was like such a big rivalry. That was like Newcastle Manly in the nineties. It was like you could not miss a dog's. They were, game. they were, they, they were, were a fixture. They were appointment they? viewing, man, every single time. Yeah, absolutely, they absolutely were. Yeah, I feel like it was. Um, yeah, it was this game. Roosters twenty nine, Bulldogs sixteen. A Ryan Cross double. A thirteen plus with a man sent yeah, off. Yeah, it was really a really early send off too. That's good stuff. Yeah, I think that was. I think that was one of Chris Walker. Like Chris Walker came up. Played in like jersey eighteen or nineteen. Oh wow! So you yeah. like 
dude, a a an undermanned Roosters team yeah. beats the Bulldogs with a Chris Walker double. To, that, is your, that is your that is your nightmare. Didn't know how to feel. Although, yeah, it was it was a little bit. It was it was two years. It was oh five. So it was a little bit. Oh, after okay, the, right. The that's that's out. not as bad but, then. Yeah, it was a lot of conflicting emotions from there. <laughs> I think a guy tried to fight me on the train home as well. Good, 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 good time. What about? Just because they were, were you were holding like, a so- holding up a sign that says "I hate both teams." No, I just. The, the, I don't know, the Bulldogs fans are angry after a game. Shocking. I don't know. Oh, no, wow, that, that never happens. You wouldn't think so. Okay, I will be back out there at that, at that same Homebush Stadium this Saturday night. Do you reckon that same bloke will be on the train I looking for, looking for revenge? Like, well, I hope so. Bring it on. Uh, South Sydney, Manly, uh, or as you referred to it, uh, the South Sydney Juniors against the Blacktown Workers. Yes. Um, bro, who knows with this one? Mm. There's so many blokes missing for both sides. So many key players missing that... I cannot get a read on it at all. Um, I'm sort of forced into taking Souths because they've got more of their guns out there. They've still got Walker. They've still got Damian Cook. Mm. They've still got Jack Whiten. Um, and because of those circumstances, I'm going to do something really dumb. Here's Taylor rolling the ball in. on him. He's after it. He might have got it down. He thinks he did. Oh! Cold train cup. I don't think I've cold trained Souths this year. Okay. So I may as well... I may as well do it now but I'm not doing it with any confidence one because South have so many blokes out and two because I can't call train anything at the minute oh. I'm all over the damn place that's all right oh mate I think you you'll get one here though I'm back in there tell me why well I think you touched on it there the the, the outs for both teams are significant I'm, I'd be foolish to argue that Latrell Mitchell and Cam Murray are not significant outs for Souths but the the forward pack without Murray had been going okay it, for those couple of games before he came back and then whilst he did play well last week, there were other forwards out there that played better. Like, like Keon was the best forward in the game last mm-hmm. week. Tom Burgess had a really good game. I think Moali's starting to put together a pretty good season. Jai Arrow, even Michael Cheekan had a pretty good game last week. So Murray is the best forward in this team. And when he's back in the team, he'll be playing 80 minutes of brick. But he didn't do that last week. And they still had enough to beat the Broncos. So I feel like a manly team that's missing Paseca, Jake, uh, Alloyes suspended. Alloyes suspended, Homoli's in origin, even Aaron Woods, who would probably be in this team if he was available, is injured. Nathan Brown's injured as well, I think. Oh, Matt Lodge, sorry, Matt Lodge is injured as well. He'd probably, he'd probably get a call up too. Like, they are really down to the bare bones. I know that Toff Sipley's been named. I wonder if he'll play because, I mean, he, he, he had that injury issue as well last week. So we'll see about that. And the one thing I found curious was Carl Lawton being named at halfback. Yeah, I don't know so, if that's actually going to happen. Well, so that's, that my, my thoughts were there is, I mean, there's a world where, like, Sipley doesn't play. Nathan Brown moves to ten. Lawton moves to lock, and uh, young uh, Jamie Humphreys or whatever his name. What's his yeah, name? Jamie. Jamie, Jamie Humphreys. Humphreys is his name. He's, he's back. <laughs> yep, uh, and he plays halfback. That seems pretty likely to me. Mm. Uh, there's a fair bit of hype about Jamie Humphreys, um, not just because of he's a player, but his father Stephen Humphreys, a well-known rugby league administrator, and I think Manly are doing their best to sort of hose down a little bit of that hype. But I'm expecting him to debut at halfback. Uh, again, he's not someone I've seen a lot of, mm. but I've heard a lot about him. Manly are really Manly keen fans on are very him. Excited about They're it. They're very keen on him to the point where I think he almost jumped. He, he pretty much jumped Gordon Chan Kum Tong in sort of like the. Mm. I think it was at the start of the. I think they sort of had him ahead of Gordy three names mm. in, in being that bench utility, and then Chan Kum Tong took it back. But Humphreys is a player that the club is really keen on. That they think has a really really bright future. So. Yeah. I don't know how he'll go. Maybe maybe Luke Brooks takes a little bit more control. Maybe Luke Brooks has one of those rabbit killer games. He was good that in he Vegas. He's known for, you know? I don't know. Vegas Luke. Like not everyone who played No, there's Vegas Richie. There's only yeah. one king of Vegas per ta- per per matchup. You were about to say per team and then you realized that they played They realized teams. Play the different yeah. games, yeah. But they got Ray Vega though. His name's almost Vegas in general. Ray Vega rules, dude. Yeah. I love how angry he is. Yeah. Uh for Souths, I if I was you, mm. I would want to see a really big game from Jack Whiten. Yes. So the last few weeks, I think Cody Walker's been playing really well. Keon's obviously been doing great stuff. I think Damian Cook's really found something too. Mm. And I think Whiten has been playing really hard, but... I love his aggression. Yeah, I know. But he's been playing really hard, but not always... Uh, not always, not, 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 not always efficiently, yes, if you I'd know what I mean. He's, ru- he's, running the, he's running the ball well. He's getting involved. He's kicking pretty well as well. But... There are still a lot of errors and some yeah. bad decisions and all that sort of thing. And that can happen with Whiten, right? That's just part of the deal. It was a deal that Canberra made mm. for many, many years. Uh, but with Luttrell out, I think they're going to need someone to step up a little bit creatively. Yep. I think Cook and Walker are already going at about peak capacity. And they're going to need just a little bit more from Whiten 
just get a little bit more of a saddle on what he's doing and South will go a long, long yeah. way to doing something in this game. Uh, it's a good time and they get Jai Gray back from injury as well to replace Latrell. He was playing pretty well for them before he got hurt and was really in that darkest period of the season with South, a real bright spot and, and a guy that I know a lot of people are very excited about mm. for the future. So that's why I just kind of think like getting him back, like obviously he's not Latrell Mitchell. No one is Latrell Mitchell. But you get a guy who's played a few games at fullback he's in sharp. first grade this he's year. Sharp, yeah. He's sharp. He can, play, he can throw a pass. He's a good ball runner. Um, and then you get and, and as I said, with Murray, Murray not playing is not ideal, but the forward pack has been playing well enough in the last couple of weeks without Murray, who's only just come back from injury, that I think that they should be able to overpower a pretty understrength manly, manly forward pack. And especially, I look at the bench, man, and like, Seattle's so going to have Tom Burgess and Talis Duncan coming off the bench, and Manly are going to have Gordon Chan, Kuntong, Ben Condon, Caleb Navale, and Atasi James. I do like Atasi James. I do too. He's a bit, he's a big thing that doesn't mind throwing his weight around. Mm. I always love those sorts of dudes. But I wonder, mate, like, I would have said the same thing about Saints last week when Manly, all Manly's blokes got injured. Yeah. And Manly were just able to keep playing so up-tempo that I agree it didn't with that, really matter. Also, you know? they had, like, their, their three best players in that game were probably Hamoli, DCE, and Jake. Well, yes. And now none of them are playing. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... But you know, but, guys, but you know what I mean? If they, playing, if they go into it with a, similar, with a similar plan yeah, to try yeah, and yeah, negate yeah. that strength... Like, I'm, mate, I'm tipping South. Like no, no, I know, I know. Sets. But, like, I just... But, like, these origin-affected rounds, it's easy for weird things to happen. That is true. It's just nice for us to get the sort of like us, I think last year we got we got really got the short end of it with those origin affected rounds. Oh, we're still that, talking about no. This. I'm just saying it's nice that the wheels turned. I think we're the ones in this game getting the sort of like the the fortunate that dastardly Brad Fitt breaking the drop. blew up the season. I'm literally saying the opposite. We last didn't. yeah, last year though, uh, and I'm excited to see Liam LeBlanc, uh, Matt's nephew. Well, it's so good to see someone who was raised on sitcom money. Mm. You know, Matt LeBlanc, obviously yeah. Joey and Friends. Yeah. And his son, Liam LeBlanc, he's lived a high life, but he's still out there trying to make a name for himself. It's like how Julia you know? Louis-Dreyfus was on sitcoms, even though her family's like billionaires. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, anyway, Liam LeBlanc is one of these forwards that people around the club have been pretty excited about for the last couple of years. I think I said this when he was named on extended bench at Giants. Same birthday as me, so I'm rooting for him. Is he taller than you? Uh, I know that's a big thing for uh, you. 180, oh, I think not that much taller than well, me, but yes, yeah. he is taller than me. But, Maybe um, you go out there with a Cuban heel and... Oh, I would never... Not, not, if, not if Joey Tribbiani's out there. <laughs> <laughs> i got to look my best for Joey. <laughs> i got to. <laughs> Dr. Drake Ramore. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm to be south. I'd be nice to... I haven't gone to a game with my family in a few weeks. So that'd be nice. It's been a minute, actually. I think maybe a good Friday. Look at that. When they needed you, you abandoned them. It's not... It's, I think it's the way the draw kind of broke. Like we sure, had. mate. Mate, whatever you say. We had Big Trucks engagement party the day we played the Warriors. And we had a housewarming the day they played para. And then every other game has not been... And Broncos was Charlie's birthday. Whatever so, you say, man. Just telling you, mate. Mate, Keeping whatever you, you say. Keeping of my wheelings and dealings. I'm sorry. If you, if you don't care about my life, that's okay. I care about yours. I care about uh, heading to Campbelltown on Sunday to watch the West. We got so many Tigers games. Oh, no, I <laughs> know. So bad. <laughs> but they are playing your actual team this week. Yes. The Raiders of Yes. Who um, I also considered Coltrane. Oh yeah, you shouldn't do that. I considered it. I uh, yeah, I'm glad. To, I'm glad that you considered against it in the end. Um, look, I have a bad habit after one Canberra win, thinking they're going to win the comp, and after one Canberra loss, thinking the you are, is going to fall out of the season. You are the preeminent. It's over. We're so back. I am, and I, but I am only that way because Canberra made me that That's way. That's true. And I can't live with that passion, man. Mm. Um, Canberra really need to win this one. They this sure is a do. very important game in the context of this season. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So. Canberra should be getting Jamal Fogarty back after three more games, right? Mm. It's a nine game t nine games total without him. He's done right far now, better than right now. They're three and three, yeah. which I absolutely would have taken when probably, Fogarty. You honestly would have probably taken three and six. So if they win this game, the worst that they can four be without him is four and five, mm. and I think that's a really good result. The games after this, they've got the Storm away. That will be really, really hard, even if the Storm guys are backing up from Origin. And then after that, they've got the Knights at home, which is a game I think they can win, but who knows with how they're playing at home at the minute. And there's, I think there's a chance Ponga will be back by then as well. So you've got to be careful about that. So this game, all of a sudden, which is the most winnable of those three, becomes incredibly important. Mm. Um, and I also think after the way they played last week, it's very important for them to just sort of get back on their game, get back to some of the things that they've been doing well this season at times. you know. And the Tigers do have some vulnerabilities to them. You know, they had that big emotional win last week, which was fantastic, but backing up that same sort of effort physically and emotionally is really, really difficult, especially for a younger side, a less experienced side. 
you know. And while Canberra, without Fogarty, maybe don't have the craft to break down a lot of teams, they do have size and they do have blokes who can break tackles and sort of create stuff out of nothing. So I, I think if Canberra really attack their left side early, so if Canberra with uh, Ethan Strange, Hudson Young, Sebastian Chris, Xavier Savage, that's been their best edge this year. They're going up against that Tigers edge that's got Brent Naden and Solomon Atape, mm. who were cracked open a couple of times by the Titans yeah. last week. So that's a good matchup for Canberra. While Bole and Utoi Kamano did really well last week, Utoi kamano has been good sometimes this year. bole has been good nearly every time. Canberra's forward pack should be able to get over the top of them, you know? So I'm sort of hoping that Canberra can kind of overwhelm the Tigers early with their aggression, with their athleticism, Mm. just put them on the mat early. And I think after the big week or after the big win the Tigers had last week, the come down from that might make it hard to replicate that sort of effort. But the Raiders are insane. That's true. And that's something we always... the Tigers at this game, I'm glad you weren't there. I'm also glad I wasn't there. Yeah. The, the two like and the two games that like the two games the Raiders played against the Tigers last year were horrible experiences for me, mm. and the Raiders they st- they have this in them and they always will they all they always have the ability to totally drop their bundle for almost no reason you know I was talking to uh, someone else about this game the other day and he's like oh mate I'd love to see Canberra you know really open the throttle and get a big 13 plus win I was like mate I'd settle for a one point but they, like they, to, that's kind of the zone that they're in to at be the fair they did that the first time they played them this year they did I know, that, I know that Tigers had that mini comeback when it was they got it back for 12 all or 14 12 or something like that but then you guys really put the foot on the throttle in the second half and ran away with it. and that was I think when I said on the show that this may be maybe campus turned a corner and this is a new Raiders team that's actually going to be able to put oh teams Bert, away this season. don't be silly <laughs> Um, did you know that the Tigers have lost 10 games in a row at Campbelltown? Yes, I've been to many of them. <laughs> We've been to almost all of them. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they haven't won a game there since 2020. It was when they were up 34 nil at half time, the Cowboys nearly lost. Yeah, I remember that one too. Well, that, that, that's, that's, yeah, so I'm not, like, I don't think, after the way Canberra played last week, even though it is the Tigers, like, I don't think there's a Raiders fan in the world who's super confident no. about this game, you know? I don't think Raiders fans are ever confident about anything. We're only confident when it looks like we shouldn't have a chance. That's true. That's like when a guy gets sent off. Well, no, like, or a sin bid. what if we just won? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the mantra always, mm. you know, and that's when I feel most comfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, it is going to be tough. For the Tigers, they're getting Galvin back. That's good. That's really that's important good. for them. Um, I think... You probably can't trust Aiden Caesar to be really good every week at this point of his career. I can. What? I can. I'll what? never stop believing. Well, no, I, I, I know, but you know what I'm saying. He is still spoiled by himself. he has had patches or like periods of this year where he's been really good for two weeks or yeah, three weeks yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. And he was really good last week for them. You know, they're going to be able to keep Appy at hooker for the entire match. That'll be really, really big for them. You know, like the, the framework of the side is, is just that little bit stronger than last week and who knows maybe that win last week is something that throws the shackles off a little bit you know like this thing that I'm talking about about backing up a really emotional win you could have said the same thing after that win over Cronulla at Leichhardt earlier this year but they did back that up with that really good win over Parramatta on Easter Monday that um, you know and then there was two months of unpleasantness well then there was two months of unpleasantness but that's the thing I it might just be because I'm spooked after how, how bad Canberra were last week yeah but I'm not really confident about this one at all. And if you had to coal train the Tigers, you hadn't done that yet. I haven't done it yet. I think this would, might have, might be the week wow. to do it. Yeah. Should have done it, I should have done it last week. But mm. um, no, I, I'll stick with the wise for now. But mm. I am going to tip Canberra. Yeah. I'll tip Canberra as well. Um, again, very little confidence in that at all. Zach Wolford's on the bench. You love Really Zach love that. It's uh, actually quite sad how excited I am for him to get like 15 minutes at the end of the game. But that's what that's what the Raiders hooking situation has the, sort of done the, to the, me. The the most Raiders case scenario for this is like you're down by eighteen when he comes up with ten minutes left and then you come on here on Monday and talk about how he looked really good and you hope that Ricky's <laughs> gonna name him to start next week. <laughs> and then he won't. Oh, what has my life become? Uh, it seems like it's been in a holding pattern for a few years now with Ricky Stewart making baffling uh, decisions around spine play. I know, but I keep making the finals. That is that's true. The thing. You, you can't gotta... argue with success. <sighs> well, mate. You know, we can't turn. If there's the, one word like, I associate like our, with the Canberra like our, Raiders. It's like success. how you can't turn this into the AJ and Mark Nichols hour. We mm. can't turn this into Nick Campton's Ricky Stewart therapy hour. Yep, that no, can't that's, happen. That you know. seems that seems fair. But yeah, that Raiders left hand side against the Tigers right hand side. Honestly, that could be the hinge on which this game swings. 
So I want a big one from Strange, who's had a really good season. I'd love a big one from Seb Chris, mm. who hasn't had much Quite of a season. year. He's sort of struggled to get going. He's kind of the only one in the side who's really struggled for White and leaving. For all of White and's good things and his faults, one thing that he's actually consistently good at was just sort of shuffling the ball to his outside men. Yep. And because he was such a big running presence, people always had to pay attention to him. So I don't think it's I don't think it's coincidence that Seb Chris is not getting as much clean ball and isn't doing as much with it. He's not getting one on one opportunities as often. So that's something I'd really like to see Canberra stress this week. Yeah, absolutely. I, I will to Canberra. Okay, one bit of very sad news before we get out of here. Uh, it hasn't been officially sort of announced by the clubs yet, but it's it's doing the rounds in the media that Damien Cook will be heading to the Dragons. How are you feeling? It's pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah. Talk me through it. Damien Cook better than anybody else represents the current era of the Rabbitohs in the sense that he wasn't there in 2014 when they won the grand final and his involvement in the team in the sort of those three years after that was kind of weird in the sense that especially in 2016 and 17 the fan, fans were so frustrated that he wasn't getting the starting job over guys like Robbie Farah and Cam McInnes both great players in their own rights but Cook it was clear from mm. the moment we saw him I think he had, he had a game against Souths actually for the Bulldogs yeah, where he looked yeah. incredible. Well, he scored like a long range Damian, try. Was Damian, Damian was one of my favourite players in the yeah. entire league. Mm. And a big part of that is because it took so long for him yeah. to become a star. I think he debuted in like 2011 or 2012 for the Dragons and then played like a game or two a year. Yeah, 2013 off the yeah, bench. Yeah, and then a, a little bit at the Dogs. And then Michael Leisha went down towards the end of 2015 and Cook was killing it in reserve mm. grade. And they brought him in and he was unbelievable. I yeah, think the, he played... Five games, scored four tries, including uh, his first one was against South, and he and yeah, he, and he just well he had a, he had a, he had one of those ones as well yeah. where he's chasing a ball to put it down and then taps it back mm. in, and he just absolutely yeah, they, they took us apart, dazzled them. He yeah. had a, he played great, and it was like wow, this dude's really got something. Canterbury made the questionable decision to stick with Lysha over Damian Cook, and he went to South, and it looked like it was all going to start Cook. happening. But he came off the bench for two years. Yeah, Cook well Cook played five games for the Bulldogs in that little run. He scored in four of those games. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was great. And th that decision at the time, Bulldogs fans were pretty upset, and I don't blame them at all. Mm. But you're right. He come, so he comes to Souths. He, he actually he, he plays first grade off the bench. He gets a couple of games two, starting. Two years he's coming off the bench. Ends up playing some fullback in reserve grade too. It was a yeah. weird time. And I think that that really sums up what Souths were in that time. 2015, they started the year really well. They had the, oh, they've forgotten how to lose game. It went off a cliff towards the end of the season. 16 and 17 were both just really tough seasons for the club. And obviously, you can't be too upset. You won a comp in 2014. But they didn't win a whole lot of games, and, and they and they got blown out a few times. And that was really hard to watch a lot of the time with, with the talent that they had. Like It was basically the same guys that played in the grand final, minus... Minus Sam in 2015, but like it was, it was pretty much the same squad, apart from a couple of guys, and they just, they were bad. And Damien Cook kind of summed that up because he, he was like this sort of bright spark in the team that people were watching, going, "Why isn't this guy getting more of a chance?" And then he gets the, and in, in a similar thing to what happened with the Bulldogs in in 20 in 2014, at the end of 2017, he finally gets a run in the team as the starting number nine in in a year where Souths were really really poor, and he and he and he plays great in a win over the Dragons. He plays great in a win over his former club, the Bulldogs. He plays great in a win, a win over the Warriors as well. And South finished the year, and again, you're going back at this bit back and forth, and he finally, 2018. Yeah, and it all happens. He starts the year at hooker. Finally gets his big chance in first grade. He's yeah. not until he's 27, mm. and he's incredible. Yeah. That whole season. He should have won the Daly M that year. Yeah. And he, he just, it, it was, it was... So great to see a guy who'd sort of hung around, hung around, mm. on, honestly, had hung around beyond the point of realistic. It's great. There are a lot of blokes in reserve grade who get to that age who think, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just get one game. I just need my chance. I just need my mm. chance. A lot of them never get that chance. A lot of them get to yeah. 28, 29, 30, and they've spent 10 years playing mm. park footy waiting for a go, you know? And for all of them, they dream of being Damien Cook, yeah. of finally getting this chance. Yeah. And he just turned into... An incredible, an incredible football. I would, I would say a, a, almost a unique hooker as well. I don't think I've ever seen a hooker that fast. No. I've never seen a hooker that, like, one chance, one missed tackle, and he could be gone. It doesn't matter if you're six metres out or 60 out. That speed that he had, that he honed, mm. sprinting on those beaches, Matthew. Yeah. It was amazing. And then the meteoric rise through 18, he gets the origin jersey because he, cause he out-jules out Cam McInnes in that early period there. And he's unbelievable for the Blues. Remember how good he was on Debu at the MCG that night? You know, and then he has that great try against Melbourne late in the year as well, where he beats the 10 blokes. One of the best moments I had as a, at being at a game, watching him score that try and thinking, oh, holy hell, we're, 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 we might win the comp this year. Yeah. Like he was that good. I forgot to mention 2016, the same thing happened where he, 
got the nod for the like the last four weeks of the season. They go down to Melbourne and lose lose that 15-14 game. If you remember, they gave away the penalty. I think he gave it away, actually, Ooh. on the siren. And Cam Smith kicks a penalty goal and the Storm win a gold point. South never won in Melbourne. That was the closest they ever got. Then they win every game to finish the season. And then he's back on the bench to start 2017. And they do the same dance again. It was so frustrating. And then, yeah, 18 comes. I agree with you. I thought he was the best player in the league that year. Should have won the Dallium. And he just became such an integral part of this South Sydney yeah. machine. Well, he became, he became one of the best... One of the best hookers in the league. One of the best players in the league. You yeah. Know? My memories about him are probably more centered around origin stuff. Yeah. Um, but the blue, the, the two best blues teams of all the three best blues teams of recent years, he was a huge part in all of them. In 18 and 19, him and Tedesco attacking up the middle of the field is the best the New South Wales team has looked in like 15 years, if not more. You know, it was the highest level of the game. Yeah. And he was exceptional. Well, he was with, superb. With like, ex- apart from... If I think Tedesco played every game in the Fitler era, right? Mm. Every game? Is that right? Yes. So Cook only missed one. So I think Cook is the second yep. most tenured blue player. Yeah, he was a huge part of it. He was, vi- he was vice captain for a while yeah. and all that. And, you know, the last couple of years, things have changed a little bit. He probably isn't as dominant as he once was. Um, the last few weeks, he's really found something. The last again. few weeks, he has found something. And he'll get his 200th game with Souths in a couple of weeks, and that'll be really good. I. As a, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm a huge Damien Cook fan, not just as a footballer, but as a person. He is well. such he's, a nice dude. Anytime a, you have to deal with him in media Yeah, stuff. a lot of the guys who had to sort of wait to become first grade stars are a lot more grounded and a lot more just generous with their time than some of the blokes who have been stars since they were 17 years old. Um, but because Cookie is such a good dude, he's someone I'm always going to really support and hope he does well. Um, I don't mind this move for Saints, even though Jacob Little's been playing good footy for them over the last couple of seasons. I think getting another experienced spine player is a good thing for them. Um, and I think for Cook, it's I, I know you're sad he's leaving, but for me, with no South Sydney bent, I like that it's coming full circle a little bit. I like that he's, he's going back home to finish his career where he started. He's a Helensburg boy. I think the plan was always to go back Country down origin there. legend. Country origin legend, played in the last ever game. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I like that he's coming full circle like that. And I hope it works out. I hope it's not a Josh Hodgson situation. Mm. But I don't think it will be no. either. Yeah, I'm just sad, man. I've, I love Damien Cook. He's mm. been what, do you want, what do you want South to do, dummy half? I, well, the, the obvious link was with Wayne coming back. Marshall King, but Marshall King resigned with the Dolphins last week. He so did, yeah. I, they've been high on Pete the Greek for a couple of years now. And I think that whilst Cook has been great the last couple of weeks, the big problem at the start of the season was he wasn't bringing the forwards onto the ball with that sort of trademark zip that he's had in the past. And he has had sort of lost a step in his, in his decision-making. He did seem a little bit more indecisive at times. And and Mamazoulis, when he played, did it, it did seem like the forward pack was a little bit more direct. Not defensively particularly good, by all accounts, Pete, but um, a really good a really good sort of no-frills number nine. And I think that that's kind of what Wayne Bennett wants. The and lion, the lion of Athens. Yeah, it, it sucks. I, I, I think in Damien Cook's been a gigantic part of what has been such a joy to watch South, a uh, South squad for these from twenty eighteen until twenty twenty two. Just been such a joy to watch, and it's and it sucks that he's leaving. It it really does suck. Like it didn't it didn't like when Kiri left, it was bad. But we only really had like we only really had like a year and a half, two years with Luke Kiri. You know, Damien Cook's been an integral part of this club for a long time now. He's going to end up with two hundred games for South. He's going to end up as one of the most cat rabbits of all time. And I'm just devastated that he's going. Mm. Yeah. Oh well. What, what a fun like? note to end the show on. Yeah. Didn't think I'd get this sad. Oh well. I guess it's nice that we can still feel things. <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, quick thank you to thank the people. Thank you, thank you to Damien Cook for teaching us to love again. You made me care more. <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, quick thank you to the people in top two tiers on our Patreon subscription service. If you'd like to support us, go to patreon.com forward slash and remember because you get access to our Discord server, an extra show every week, merch discounts, and plenty more. The website is coming next week with an actual merch store on it. Exciting. Exciting. You can buy the poster. I guess the poster, by the way. Do love the poster. That's my dad for making Please it. Please don't sue us, Disney. I don't think they can. We work for them. That's how it works. Mate, I don't know what it's like up at the Mouse House. I assume that we can make parody of any Disney product going forward. Sure we can. <laughs> sure we can. Thank you too. A perverted female listener. Sup. Chris Avnell, Dave, Stu, the Slater Clubbo disconnect. Whoa, whoa, the dogs are talking. Whoa, whoa, let them talk, talk. Uh, a bloke hurting in the shed. A nightmare on Caxon Street 3, Dreamy Warriors. Adam Small, Billy's later. Broncos legend Adam Reynolds, Bruce the Piety Pom, Butsy, Chibacca Snuffleupagus, Corey, Slow Legs, Strongheart Oats, Dan Cullinane, <laughs> David, an anonymous backer, Ed Burton, 
Frankly, my dear, I love you. Let's remarry. <laughs> Gold Coast fullback employment at record 300% high while half's numbers dip. I'm above David Fafita in the Queensland pecking order. Jason, Joel Wrigley, John, Josh Brandon. Jerbo's invaluable leadership. Kicks outs into the comp. Kicks outs out of the comp. Kicks outs out of the comp. Lachlan Hancock, Luke Charles Midbought, Mads, Taylor's version. Matthew Duggan, Morgan Watkins. My ding ding dong is hard and I'm sad. Never trade a user captain Jake Tomlin's five runs for 37 metres. Pasami Army, Paul Max 78. Presence is most felt in its absence. It is time for the Crimson Sky at the New South Wales Blues. Push it up. <laughs> Manly. Reese Brown, reigning Flip Cup champion Dave Fafita, Roxanne Clark, see you in Vegas, Ty, the Black Vegetable, the Brisbane Sniper, the dynamic duo of Ted, Barney, Marshall, Lily, and Robin. Uh, Thor. Tim the Toolman says, mind your business, Wilson. <laughs> Was. Was any Celestia. Westlife Podcast Souths were cowards in 1909. Some says they still are. And where are you? And I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for your support. So everyone just listens. Thank you as well. <laughs> you really, they really test you on that one, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> they really if I'm going to have to sing like vocals. a line of Tom DeLonge every week, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Really turned it on as well. Didn't I just? Yeah. I mean, you have to. You have to. Man. Well, I feel like you have to. It's a big it's, part of your identity. It really is. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was a nice way to cheer me up after the, <laughs> after the time you cooked chat. Sad. Mate. Yeah. All right. I won't be sad when we win on Saturday, hopefully. Okay. So, uh, which which Rabbitohs departure has made you the saddest? I think this one. Really? really? More because, so than Reynolds? Well, Reynolds, the writing was on the wall for such a long time. Yeah. And this also... Did, this, this one did seem to happen really quickly. Yeah. It seemed like... It seemed like it was like, oh, he's going to play reserve grade. And I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. That lasted one week. And then mm. he was back playing quite well, I mm. might add. Um, and like, the, again, again, the Kiri one, the blow was softened by Cody being there. And Kiri had already won near the premiership. The thing that makes me the most sad is that unless an absolute miracle happens this mm. year, Damien Cook's going to leave Souths as probably their best ever number nine. Better and Isaac Luke. It, overall, probably. Oh. But, um, and, and didn't win a premiership. I can tell you that after the 2021 grand final, he was maybe the most upset of all the Rabbitohs players. But, I think yeah. he kind of knew that that was maybe his last shot, yeah. uh, which sucks for him. But have you seen that Fletch and Hindy clip with Cook that's been It was doing around? the rounds the other day. Uh, people haven't seen this. There's an old clip where they're, Fletch and Hindy are wearing Dolphins jerseys and they're asking, they're kind of like teasing Cook, oh, maybe you move up to the Dolphins. And Cook basically says, oh, the old coach up there, he doesn't like me. He just wants a number nine that... Passes and tackles. Yeah, he says Cody's his favorite, and he's like very sort of dead. They think or he's whatever. joking. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he he's is. Yeah. At all. And now, yeah, he's going. So, yeah, uh, he's sprinting on beaches in heaven now. Well, there are good beaches down there. That's true. Not it, many beaches. We, in heaven. That might have to be an off-season draft of like the commentary tropes of all time, because Damien Cook, beach sprinter, is right up there with Antonio Gates, played basketball. I, I Mike think, Pike, the Swans player who honestly, played rugby. I think it's the only league equivalent that's on the level of of those ones. Gates. Gates playing basketball, Fitz going to Harvard, yeah. that sort of deal. Fitz going to Harvard's a great one. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is an off-season project. Yeah, it'll all be right, fun. Let's do. Let's get out of here. All right, thank you so much for listening, everyone. We will see you. Uh, next week to recap everything that happens this weekend. Say goodbye, Campo. Goodbye, Bertrand. That's goodbye from me.